What's going on YouTube? It's Mr. Ferguson here once again. Thank you guys so much for coming back for another video here from Central North Carolina, where I'll kind of try to stand out of the way for a second. I got it in cinematic mode, but man, the lawn right now, we have just got back from Virginia and my lawn is so tall, so lush, so green from that flagship application we put down. Uh, we didn't have any rain, but I've been gone for two days and oh my goodness, I can already tell it's grown an inch. It really needs to be mowed. We'll have to do that tomorrow. Uh, we're filming this one today for you on Monday. That's why we don't have time to mow and do all this stuff. But thank you for tuning in. We're going to jump right into the video. Uh, this is the time of year where we get a lot of emails around this time of specific situations from people. I try to answer people that I can uh, this time of year of people giving me their specific lawn situations and asking for advice. And one of them, I think that I saw uh, uh, more than one person has asked about is poa annua in their lawn. So I wanna talk about today real quick about dealing with poa annua in your lawn. We have to first know what poa annua is. So I wanna give you a brief definition for the new people out there. Okay, what is this thing? I see a seed head in my lawn. Um, well, that can be one of two things. If you have Kentucky bluegrass in your lawn, it can be your Kentucky bluegrass going to seed. It can also, if it looks like this picture right here, it's probably poa annua. It is a lime green looking color. Um, it's, it's most of the time it has some pretty shallow roots. Um, and it's got a thinner or less seed head than a Kentucky bluegrass going to seed. Uh, so it is just, it is sticks out. Um, if it grows tall or if it grows above like two and a half inches, you get that seed head. Those seed heads fall into our dirt. Um, they will lay dormant. They can lay there for years and not go dormant or not go or not germinate until next year, the following year, we don't really know. Uh, the issue, the problem with, with Poa Annua, the reason why it is such an issue for all of us, it's what got me into lawn care. Some of my first videos was when True Green rolled up, you guys, some of you guys have been around the channel know, when True, True Green was going around my neighborhood, they came here, they looked, they walked, they gave me my square footage, which I was literally going outside to do that day. I've told that story. Um, but the guy basically said in my backyard, you've got a backyard, this whole backyard, was full of poa annua everywhere the eye could see literally from this side of my house back here everything was poa annua i would say 25 percent was was fescue grass and it was like literally 75 percent poa annua that's how bad so i am proof and evidence that if you're struggling with poa annua you can turn it around and you can have a nice green fescue lawn without all the poa annua. It can be done. I've done it here. So we know the second thing, it's a cool season weed. Poa annua begins to germinate in your lawn. If you're here in North Carolina, for us, it happens right around, we read that stat from NC State, 1 September to 30 October is when 80% of our poa annua germinates. So you're too, too late, you're way too late to stop it from popping up in your lawn. What is germinated is germinated. So this started in the fall time. And now when you're coming out of your house, you're trying to get into the lawn, it's getting nice outside. Now you're noticing it. Well, it started developing in your lawn way back September, October timeframe. That's why in my lawn, we did pre-emergent. We didn't do overseed. I made the decision to put down Dithiopier, which is a pre-emergent. And that's why I don't have any back here right now. Um, so we won't get into all the things we've talked about recently. A thick lawn can also prevent it. That's the first thing I can tell you. I'm gonna be overseeding this year. And so I'm gonna be overseeding heavily. I want it to thicken up in my lawn because I wanna be able to choke out. I don't want any space for the weeds. But let's get back to the topic. Okay, so I've got poa annua. You're telling me that it began to develop in September and October, but I'm seeing it in March. What do I do? Well, really, there's really only two options, I would say. Well, let's go through the options. Number one, number one, you just got, you can just deal with it. That's what we're doing at the project lawn. I'm not spraying anything. We've got poa annua in the project lawn. Go back, check the update, the last update we did here on the channel. I've got poa annua in the project lawn all along the fence line there. Um, and so we're just going to suck it up and deal with it. So that's one option. Number two, if you want to try to begin to try to kill it, uh, suppress it, 
um, then we'll talk about tenacity. That is an herbicide that is very popular to kind of fight against poa annua. And I'll get more into that in a second. But ultimately, the, the poa annua is likely here in North Carolina, I've noticed and I've kind of kept my eye on it. When does it start to die out? I've just told you that it's a cool weed cool season weed so that means it prefers to it starts germinating in the fall and the cool season and then once it starts getting into spring and summer it dies it goes away and it begins to germinate germinate again it'll start again this this upcoming september so the heat alone will kill the poa annua it will begin to go away and basically what you deal with crabgrass and poa annua are basically like brothers in my mind um, one germinate the, the poa annua begins to germinate in september and here we deal with it in the winter and into the early spring. Crabgrass begins to germinate uh, when temperatures get uh, around 55 degrees. That's somewhere around the end of February here in North Carolina. And we deal with that all the way into the fall. So you're dealing with one or the other. And most of the time, if you're going to overseed, you can't do pre-emergent all the time. But when you can, you can prevent one or the other. So again, that's another thing you can do there, pre-emergent, if you're not overseeding. But I want to talk to you guys about um, tenacity specifically. And I've got it pulled up here on the, uh, the little uh, iPad I've got here that I can read this. Um, I am an affiliate of DoMyOwn.com. Please, as I always say, do your research. If you're interested in MISO, the generic version, or Tenacity, there's links in the description of this video. If you're on a PC, just click more. You'll see the links. Uh, that helps me here on the channel. You're just basically buying it through my link. You're helping me out as well as getting the product you want. But do your research. You may find it cheaper on Amazon. You may find it cheaper in other places. Um, I have a bottle of Tenacity in my shed behind me here. Actually, it'd be over here, but I hardly ever use it. Um, so I want to tell you about about tenacity. So if you're one that's like, well, I can't deal with this. This is driving me nuts. What can I do? Can t will tenacity, the, here's the big question, will tenacity kill the poa annua? I had someone comment on one of the videos and said, tenacity will absolutely kill poa annua. No, it will not. Please don't believe that. Um, that is not true. And I'm about to prove it to you here in a second. So I'm going to stand to the side here and throw up the graphic from Do My Own. Here on their website, they're offering Tenacity 10% off uh, for an 8-ounce bottle, $49.98. Uh, that is up to you. Um, but let's go down. I just want to quickly read the product overview. Tenacity is a systemic pre-emergent and post-emergent herbicide for selective contact and residual control of weeds and turf grasses. Tenacity can be used for weed control prior to or during seeding of certain turf grasses during renovation. So it is a pre-emergent and a post-emergent. It is a double agent. I have a video called a double agent. It both, both prevents weeds from coming up and weeds that are already up, it will attack and hurt and kill some of those. Secondly, it can be used at the time of seeding. So that is another reason why tenacity is popular. You're even seeing miso or tenacity mixed in some other weed and feeds and other products uh, at the big box stores. When applied as a pre-emergent, weeds absorb tenacity during emergence from the soil. Dry conditions following application may reduce the pre-emergent activity. If rainfall has not occurred within 10 days after a pre-emergent application, activate, um, act, activate with 0.15 inches of irrigation. So it's basically saying water it in. Um, when used as a post-emergent, which is what you would be doing if you have POA annua in your lawn, um, Tenacity weed killer is absorbed by susceptible weeds through foliar contact and soil absorption. Foliage of treated weeds cease growth after application, then turn white, loss of chlorophyll, and death may take up to three weeks. A repeat application is required after two to three weeks for improved post-emergence weed control. A non-surfactant should be added in post-emergent applications. So basically, this is an application. You would spray it. It will cling to the leaf. They recommend a surfactant so that it clings to that weed, and it will take two to three weeks. And they, off, and they also talk about how it will turn white. That is one of the negatives of tenacity. When you spray this, if you blanket spray your lawn, when the chlorophyll is affected, it, it begins to turn a white color and you have a white off and on green patchy white looking lawn it looks weird looks freaky it's very cool at halloween but you may not want that so be aware um and that's for post-emergence so here's here's the next part please note tenacity is not for use on bermuda grass when actively growing or saint augustine home lawns if you are watching me and you have Bermuda grass and you have St. Augustine, disregard the tenacity. It says right here, it is not for use 
when it's actively growing. Please don't say Mr. Ferguson told you to do that. I am not telling you to do that. Always read the label of products you apply to your lawn. Always, no matter what any YouTuber tells you. The second one here. Oh, what does this say? Tenacity does not provide post-emergent control of POA annua. It will only provide per suppression of POA annua when, POA annua when used as a pre-emergent. Tenacity does not provide post-emergent control of POA annua. It will only provide per suppression of POA annua when, POA annua when used as a pre-emergent. So as a pre-emergent, meaning if we're going back to September um, when we seed, this is why I've put tenacity down. I got it. I never use it. When I do use it, it's when I seed in the fall. When That's why we put it down in the fall with our grass seed to prevent. At that time, right around the 1st of September, that's when um, poa annua begins to germinate. So you're putting it down. It's giving you 28 days of at least suppression of the poa from coming up. But after that, it wears off. If you don't do another application, then you're right back to normal poa annua germinate. Remember, 1 September, 30 October. That's a big window for poa to pop up here in North Carolina. Tenacity, one application is not going to cover that entire time. You would need multiple. Um, but as it says here, it does not uh, provide post-emergent control of POA, um, the first sentence here. So if you have it right now in your lawn and you've got tenacity and you buy a bottle from Mr. Ferguson's uh, links down there or wherever you may get it and you go and spray it, don't think it's going to kill the POA annua. It will not kill it. Now, if you're going to do this in North Carolina in April, when we're getting temperatures in the 80s, you're hitting it with a herbicide and causing it to weaken. Now the sun is beaming down on it and it's crisping it up. The sun plus the herbicide may kill it. And that's what I proved in one of my first videos here. I killed it, but it was like early May. So it was a combination of it was already dying plus the herbicide just got it to go a little bit quicker than the sun doing it by itself. The target pest. Tenacity is not just for the suppression of POA annual or a pre-emergent you can put down with your seed. It's similar in a way to Ornamic 170. It can target barnyard grass, which is what you see when you put straw down in your lawn and you see all those lime green little blades coming up, that's barnyard grass. Uh, carpet weed, chickweed, clover, crabgrass, large and smooth. If you haven't done a pre-emergent and all of a sudden you're like, crap, I should have done pre-emergent. I've got crabgrass. Tenacity is something you can put down a couple applications to harm that. Um, dandelion, foxtail, goosegrass, uh, henbit, uh, yellow nutsedge, uh, purslane, thistle, wild carrots, and others. Um, it's good for use in Kentucky bluegrass, centipede. It's got St. Augustine grass. It says grown for sod only. Uh, perennial rye, fine fescue, tall fescue, buffalo grass. Uh, four, to, four to eight ounces per 30 gallons. Uh, use surfactant. Uh, it kind of depends on what you're spraying for. If you're doing it for post-emergent, you want a surfactant. If you're doing it for pre-emergent, uh, you would want to water that in. Um, and then lastly, that's about it. It gives you manufacture and all that. So, so again, when we're talking about um, is there a magic herbicide we can spray in this spring right now where we are to get rid of all the POA annual out of our lawn? The answer is no. Not that I know of. There may be a very expensive one out there that I can't afford. You can do some more research, but basically deal with what you have for now. Get to the fall and then you have to make a decision. If you want to go ahead and seed in the spring, by all means, go for it. Put down some tenacity when you seed this uh, this spring. Put some tenacity down. That'll be good for pre and post emergent. It'll it'll hurt or injure maybe some of the poa up. Um, another application, another herbicide. Me and Mr. Kevin have tested is ethofumisate also known as POA Constrictor or Etho 4SC. We've tried these two products. We sprayed in last spring with the existing POA annua at Mr. Kevin's yard. We sprayed it, we came back. There was absolutely no change with that ethyl fumisate. Um, they say on the label of that, two to three to two to three applications are needed, but you need to do this in the fall time. Why the fall time? That's when it is germinating. So that's when you wanna do it in September or October timeframe. So when you're seeding, it's perfectly fine to put ethofumisate down. So my recommendations is that you, um, you either seed right now, 
and you may be able to keep that seed alive if you can continue to water it. And then once we get a through summer and then get back into September time frame, now you're looking at you can seed again if you want to. You can also put down tenacity. You can put down um, ethofumicate. That's what likely I'll do. I've got poa constrictor out in the shed. So likely what I'm going to do come one September, no more pre-emergent in the fall time for me. I need to thicken up my own lawn this year. So what I'm going to be doing is overseeding, which means I'm going to be susceptible to poa annual again but i'm going to try the poa constrictor route i'm going to try this ethofumisate put that down uh, during my seeding or after my seeding i'm going to have to brush myself up on the label what it says there and then we're going to go from there and see if the ethofumisate helps to reduce poa and obviously we've talked about how high you cut your grass can affect uh, germinating or the sunlight penetrating through your grass it can help to germinate those poa seeds. If you're cutting your grass below three inches and the sun can easily hit the dirt in your lawn, you're helping the weed seeds to germinate. You wanna keep your tall fescue or your grass uh, three inches to four inches for the purpose of keep keeping weeds out of your lawn. I had somebody else ask, well, what if I'm starting fresh? That's what I would tell you. I do the route that I took, it worked for me and that's why I'm telling it to you. I dealt with my crappy yard during the spring because this is the exact year I walk, or this is the exact time of year I walked outside and said, I'm going to have a great yard. I thought spring was the time to do it because it just feels like, you know, new growth and a new lawn is in the air. But this is not the, the greatest time for North Carolina, maybe for other people in different regions up north. But this is the time of year I thought it was. Nope. I had to maintain my crappy. I had I had POA back here. It all ended up dying out. Um, and I was tell, writing to somebody, uh, Jesse, I believe. Shout out to Jesse if he watches this. I had to wait till about uh, mid-August. I came out here, round up the entire backyard, uh, and then waited until September, early September, rented my aerator. We aerated the whole property. Some of the areas where I had more fescue, I kept that fescue there. And I killed off other areas where I hardly had any fescue at all. We aerated the whole property. I tore this place up for two hours running an aerator. Uh, we put our tenacity down. We put our seed down. I put down granular uh, starter furt. Uh, and I did uh, a shot of or a round of RGS at the same time. And even, believe it or not, propiconazole, the fungicide can also promote growth of grass seed. So we put all of that down. We kept it water. We kept the seed moist in September. And about 10 to 12 days later, we had growth. And, uh, and, and it's been a fun joy ride of lawn care ever since. So that's what I would recommend to any of you out there that's trying to get into the lawn care. Get on a lawn care plan, uh, read up, study up, get your supplies, uh, do a soil test, see where your soil pH is. That's what I would be doing right now in spring. That's what I'll be doing all the way out until summer, prepping, reading up, and then you're ready to go to battle and ready to go to war in September or in the September, um, October-ish time frame to seed your lawn and do it at the proper time. So all through winter into 2025, this new grass that you're planting is establishing, it's growing roots, and you're going to notice just if you throw down heavy seed, you're going to choke out a lot of the poa that you may have if you didn't plant in the last three, four years like I had. And so longer video. I hope this helps with people out there that are getting into lawn care. They're researching, they're dealing with poa annua, they're finding out what it is. I hope you know what it is now. How, what it, it's a cool season weed and a cool season lawn. That's what makes it difficult to pull this thing out and just spray something to kill it without hurting our fest. You. And so that's what makes POA Annua a challenge. So I hope this has helped you. Let me know in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up. We are likely on Wednesday or Friday going to have the video that we're going to tell you what to comment on for our competition or for not a competition, our contest uh, where we're going to pull five lucky winner names in a live stream and uh, we'll read them off and, and, and draw them live. And we're going to have a uh, yard mastery is going to send three lucky winners, a bag of fertilizer and GCI turf is going to send a lucky person, a cyclone four gallon backpack sprayer. And I've got a two gallon sprayer plus uh, sprayer, backpack sprayer that I'm going to be sending to a lucky winner as well. So God bless you guys. I know it's a longer video. Give it a thumbs up, comment below. God bless you. We'll see you on the next lawn care video, hopefully on Wednesday. Take it easy.